In this video, we'll be going over study alerts. Alerts can be based on values that are generated as part of a study. These type of alerts execute in the context of a chart and require the chart to be open in order to be active, unlike price alerts where you do not have to have the chart to be open in order for them to be active. Now, similar to the price alert, you can create a study alert by right-clicking on the vertical axis of the price plot or the vertical axis of the study plot. So let's click Create Alert. In the Create Alert dialog, we're presented with two sections. We have the Parameter section and the Notification section. Now you can refer to the Price Alerts video for more details on all these single items here as I go into detail there, but I will summarize them here. So in the first line here, we have the condition, and the condition defines the criteria for triggering the event. In the first field here, we have available inputs from the selected study plot. So from our MACD, we have these available inputs. And from our last input field here, we have the option of having either an absolute comparison in which a study value is compared to a specific value. In this case, it would be this value here, 0 0.0000395. Or if we click on the indicator field, we can indicate that we want a relative comparison, in which case a study value is compared against another study value. So in this case, this study value here would be compared to the MACD signal. Let's just make this a little bit bigger here. So in the middle here, we have comparison options. We have crosses, which means if input 1 crosses above or below input 2, then the study alert will be triggered. We have crosses below. If input 1 crosses below input 2, then that will also trigger the study alert. We have crosses above. Input 1 crosses above input 2. That will trigger the study alert. And then of course we have touches. If input 1 touches input 2, then that will trigger the alert as well. Here we have trigger multiple. And if this option is checked, the alert will still be valid after it's first triggered. In this case, the alert will be triggered indefinitely until it is explicitly canceled. We have label and comments, which will be included if you decide to send an email. Under notification section, we have show alert. If this is set to yes, then the alert history window will be displayed when the alert is triggered. We have play sound. If yes is selected here, then a preset sound will be played when the alert is triggered. Of course, you can uncheck it and then select your own sound file. And it will show in the sound file field. We have the option to send an email. If we select yes, we need to make sure that our configure preferences email has been set up correctly specifically the SMTP server, and there's a separate video for that. You can also specify a different email address here if you wish. And you have the option to attach the image, which will take a screenshot of the current chart. So we're going to leave this as no for now. And we'll click OK. And now we see that the alert here has been placed, and we can click C to cancel it, and we'll also notice that we have the alert listed here in the alerts panel. Now we can do another example as well. Let's click on study, add study. I'm going to select the moving average cross. And I'll just make these smaller. I'll make that two. And I will make that four. We'll click create. Now again, if I click on here, right click and create alert. I now have the option to select those study values as well as inputs. So I'm going to select the fast moving average, crosses, the slow moving average. Let's just make this bigger here. I'll leave this as yes, I'll leave this as yes. Actually in this example, I'll click on trigger multiple so you can see it. We'll click OK. Now I'm going to do this in replay mode only because if I wait here for live price to change, we're not going to get all the signals right away. So let's just start playing. And you'll notice now, because we have multiple, we start getting 
our alerts triggered. So because we have multiple set on the moving average cross here, we see more than one signal. Let's keep going. Now we have three of them triggered. You notice the MACD was only triggered once. That's because we did not have trigger multiple selected. So let's click close. But before I do that, I just want to show you that you have some options here. If we were to click on the chart button, it'll show the chart where the alert has been triggered. And if we want to remove it from the alert history, we can always click on the X. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave that as close. So we can take a look at our alert history here. Here are our triggered alerts. You'll notice where the alerts are placed on the chart. The alert is displayed where the intersection point would be between the two values where it was triggered. And here. So now we have the option of either clearing our history, deleting specific ones. So let's just clear the fast moving average ones because we'll be getting more of those. And you'll notice that the fast moving average is still listed here and that's because trigger multiple was selected whereas the MACD was only selected to go off once. Once it goes off once, it's done. Okay, so that's it for this video and we'll see you in the next.